Hey friends, it's time for another Jeep video. Woo! Not the one I'm waiting for where I get to drive it off. But hey, I'm gonna work on something related to the Jeep again today. It's Saturday. It is May uh, 28th. It is hotter than a sea. Uh, um, all right, okay, I completely screwed that up. All right, it's hotter than a french fry at a seagull party. Okay, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, throw some seagulls to some yeah, throw some seagulls to french fries. Throw french fries to seagulls and you'll completely get it. Seagulls will fight to the death over a french fry. So when I say it is hotter than a french fry at a seagull party, it's flipping hot. It's supposed to be a high of 96 today. The hell with that. I'm in my air conditioned garage. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm in my air conditioned garage. I've got my two ton Fujitsu Halcyon unit. But it's actually a 2007 unit. Works like champ. Anyway, so back to that Jeep. And hey, remember to like my video if you enjoy it, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of my videos and click that little bell icon, ding, 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 that will let you know when I uh, release new videos. That's called the alert function. So anyway, and don't forget to check out my playlist. I have so many crazy projects going on. I use playlists to sort the different videos so that people can find things that are related because YouTube doesn't have the concept of shows or episodes, just channels. Anyway, so here we are. So we have a Jeep uh, inline six cylinder, four liter engine out of my Wrangler um, X from my 2005 Wrangler X that is sitting in the driveway and the engine's sitting here because the frame has a wrinkle and we're gonna get the wrinkle pulled out. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to try and put that engine on that stand. Now, if you wanna know more about this stand, I did a video this morning. This is the famous $75 Harbor Freight clearance uh, engine stand. They're, they're kinda of hard to find, but if you do find one, and I was lucky enough to find one a week or so ago, you can get one. And it's it's not a bad engine stand. You know, I think it, it's, it's rated for, uh, I don't know, I think, I think it's a thousand pounds. Yeah, half ton, thousand pounds. So there you go. Um, I think it'll be fine. This engine is 515 pounds dressed, which is, that means all the crap on it. And I'm putting it on here because I want to do some work to it while it's out of the vehicle. It's a whole lot easier to work on it here than it is when it's got a Jeep wrapped around it. Um, so first things first, let's do it to it. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna spin this. I think that'll, yeah, that, that ain't gonna stay there, but it'll stay there. Let me check my view. Okay, yeah, that looks good. So I need to back this up. And then I need to just spin this. Now this thing has six wheels in contact with the ground. The beautiful thing about it is all six of them swivel. The thing that sucks the most is all six swivel. Um, and that means it kind of goes where it wants to quite frequently. But it's much easier to do this with it out of the corner. So uh, let's see. I find a new place to, to put this. Yeah, I think that looks good. Let me check my angle view. There we go. So uh, the engine stand doesn't come with any bolts. And quite frankly, I'm fine with that because I don't know that I would trust my engine to um, China's cheapest bolts. Um, and I know in, in a way I kind of am, but I didn't want to go to the hassle of making my own engine stand. There, there was no value in there for me. Uh, and this is gonna be something of a pain in the ass because I've got, I've got this all the way up in here. So, um, and what I mean by that is I've got this all the way up in here and I really, it, it should be one more thing uh, turned. Uh, where the hell did it go? Um, so for those who watch my videos regularly, you may have seen the assembly video on this. I actually found the damn bolt and now I've lost it again. Where the hell did it go? Oh, come on. Dude, this is annoying. Oh, there it is. So this this traveled, you know, 
some somewhere and I actually found the bolt so I don't need to order it but I think I already did so um, I'm debating setting the engine down so I can turn this because this is this is gonna be a pain in the ass the way it's configured right now and um, what I really want is I want the engine to hang straight or as straight as engines hang so I think we're gonna try and turn the engine what would happen if we rotated this this way? So if you had a second person, that would make this easier because they could hold this while you lined all the little bolts up. Um, yeah, it, it really needs to be turned. So the other thing we could do, let me see here. But if I set it down right now, it's going to want to fall and it might damage the engine pan, oil pan. I'm not a big fan of that. So I think, I think I'm just going to leave it like this and just roll this in and I will just fight with it and it'll make for some entertainment for you guys. So first things first, I'm going to loosen these bolts a quarter of a turn so that all these are um, flexible because this is all going to need to move around in order to find all of the places that and let me show you what I'm doing so I'm going to move all these around to solve the puzzle of getting the bolts in there speaking of bolts let me go get the bolts and I'll be right back and then I'll start trying to transfer this so yeah I, I did actually order that bolt that I thought I lost um, I like to buy my hardware from Bolt Depot um, Service is pretty good, takes a few days to get here because it's in the northeastern United States. Um, why the hell they shipped it to me with UPS when I paid for postal and all this crap would have fit into a priority mail flat rate box and gotten here even faster. So anyway, it's nice that I have an extra one now. So I'm going to see if I can find somewhere to hide the extra one. Uh, I mean, it'll, it really will just spin on here. So that won't come off. Um, so there are two different sizes of bolts that you need to put this engine on an engine stand. Uh, you need some 3 8 bolts with 16 thread pitch, which means there's 16 grooves per inch that are four inches long. That's what online says. And then for the, uh, and those go up here. And for the lower ones, you need 7 16 by um, 14 thread pitch, five inches. And these, it could be uh, four and a half, but the length doesn't matter because it'll just, it'll just thread through there. So that's what we're starting with. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put some gloves on and we're gonna get at it and see where it goes. I, I, I think this is gonna be like a fat lady getting into a dress. It's gonna be a whole lot of motion and not a lot of success. And I'm fat, I can make fun of fat people. So, yeah. At any rate, I'm gonna start with the lower ones because I just think there's more meat to work with there. Um, yeah, these look too long. We'll see what happens. And as promised, this is going to be So this is going to have to come up. So we'll do that first.
So here's our first one. And you do not want to put any kind of thread sealing on these because you just don't. All right, so there's one. Spin that up. And then we're going to pull this one over. And you definitely want to start these by hand. Um, it would have been better if I had full thread bolts. These are not full thread. <sighs> we'll see. I'm not. I'm not sure that I won't be going to Home Depot and getting shorter bolts because these really do not look like they are the right length. Um, and sometimes that's what happens when you use information from the internet is you get the wrong information, in which case I'll have wasted five or six dollars in bolts and shipping and whatever. I just, you know, as they say, shit happens. But I also want this to stand off. I, I don't want the, I don't, I don't want to draw the engine right up to the engine stand. So it may be okay. Although these don't look long enough to do what they're supposed to do. So I think these should be longer and um, I'm not sure this is going to work right. So it should push against these and pull on those, but again, I don't, And I really want it to be solid. And I don't, I just don't know that that's going to happen. It's not increasing my comfort level. So this should be a relatively easy process, but I'm not feeling like this is an easy process because I just don't feel like it's being held securely. And when I go to rotate it, I think it's going to rotate too much. So I think what I'm going to need to do is get some different bolts because these should have gone all the way through. And if they had gone all the way through, uh, let me see if this, yeah, these could draw all the way up on there. And then I still don't feel like this is long enough. So I think I need a bunch of washers in here to um, force this to stand off of the engine. Uh, really what I need are sleeves, but my machining stuff and my lathe aren't running right now. So making, sl making them is out of the question. And, and quite frankly, if I had the stuff running, I would just make them out of steel and move on with my life or, or aluminum. I mean, it, you know, and a sleeve, looks like this i have one so and i cut this one out of plate aluminum with with a mill that i used to own and it would just go in here and it would serve to stand off and it would it would do a great job i think i only have one yeah so i don't see any more so i think at this point i'm going to go get some shorter bolts 
and I'm going to go get uh, a lot of washers. And I'll be back. This pisses me off. Somebody on the Wrangler forums gave me bad information, and I didn't have the engine stand at the time that I ordered it. Um, so, yeah. I'll be back. So I was going to go to Home Depot and buy some washers, but I remembered that I may have achieved critical mass on hardware. I, I had some in one of my drawers. So I looked, and sure enough, there is a bag of half-inch flat cut washers, which are nice, high-quality washers from Bolt Depot that I bought probably five years ago. So, hey, let's, let's hear one for saving all sorts of shit and buying more than we need. So we're going to see if these will do the trick. I'm going to put some gloves on. I don't know if you guys can see over here or not. Uh, I'm probably a little off the camera over there. Um, let me just adjust this here. So... Um, you know, there is a story behind this. Uh, a couple projects back, I got real frustrated with never um, not having the uh, high quality hardware and Home Depot's stock just sucks ass. That, that's the nice way of saying it. So I finally said the hell with it and I bought a whole bunch of hardware. Bet you seven and a half. Five eighths. So. I don't think that's going to be it. Sixteenths. Um, so I started acquiring basically enough hardware to have my own hardware store when I needed it. Because the reality of it is, I was quite rather sick and tired of never having the hardware I needed and having to go spend an hour dealing with Home Depot and their shitty ass stock situation. So I don't know how this is going to go exactly. We're going to kind of figure it out. But I do believe that this will work. So I'm going to start with one. And what I want to know is, yes, it will, it will catch on this and it will fit through that. All right. And so now I'm going to just stack these up and see what the depth is. So four. And I, I have a, at least 75 of these. <laughs> So I've got more than I could possibly need. Um, eight of them, I'm gonna go with 10, 12. And you're starting to see what I'm doing. I'm using a lot of washers to create my standoff distance. And I think that's gonna be about it. So once it's started, it's okay to use a tool. And in this case, I'm going to use a little impact driver. It's a, one of my DeWalt uh, tools. Yeah, that looks really nice. And of course, it's fine to use this to back it off. And you notice I'm not, I'm not hitting it really hard. I'm just, just hitting it enough to get it to... Uh, spin and it's just I'm, I'm trying to save my fingers and hands um, for those of you who may be new to my sh channel I have carpal tunnel I've had it for years it's been worked on at least once and um, so anything I can do to take strain off my hands I try to three four five six 
you know, there's no consistency in this hardware, even though this is better hardware than what Home Depot will sell me. And the engine's not centered, but that's, for the moment, that's okay, because we're gonna deal with all that right when we go to actually tighten all this. So this is gonna be a different number of washers. And the first thing we need to know is, do these, do the, are these gonna do what we need them to do here? So clearly it'll hit there. And then the question is, okay, so it's gonna fit around these, uh, these sleeves that are in here. Uh, those are guide sleeves. So, mm, I don't know what the count's going to be, but I think it's going to be at least 12 again here too. So I'm going to grab quite a few of these. Two, three, four, eight. So that's going to give us eight. So I think this, uh, it's going to be 10 at the bottom. And because these are not full um, thread bolts, it is not going to solve all of our problems. In fact, it's only going to solve some of them. We may end up having to put bolts or a bunch of these on the backside too. And that's what we're going to figure out next. So yeah, it's gonna take it's gonna take some on the backside because I I'm fully engaged there. And that's not enough. So it's gonna take five on the backside. And um, you know, I'm gonna put six on the backside. Because I really don't want any pressure. I don't want the ability to overdrive the threads. hoping not to do that, but it happens. That's the glove penalty. Yep, so they're all there. So now we're gonna run this one off and do the same thing. Really good chance if I'd have gone to Home Depot, I would not have bought a hundred washers. I probably would have bought more than two or three, but I don't think I'd have bought this many. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just run this in. And what I need to do now is get the engine kind of positioned where I want it. So part of that means it's gonna have to come down just a little bit. Uh, 
Um, so I'd really like the whole engine to come over, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. So it may just have to be where it is. Let me see what. All right, so those are three quarter. You'd think somebody had, would have invented an easier way to secure those. I hate lock, not lock washers. So I'm gonna have to get in here with probably another, uh, it might be 17. 17 and three quarters are generally interchangeable. Not that one though. Generally, 19 is my next move. Yep, 19 is it. Yeah, so we're just, I, I, again, I don't feel like this is exactly where I want it. So I'm probably gonna set it twice. And now I'm just going to see what happens when I bring these in. And you said, ah, he's got to change it again. No, no, I don't. I just have to go find the other, the other driver, which might have been easier than changing it, but this is just my regular impact driver. It's nothing magical, but it'll do for this. All right, at this point, the engine should hang on here. Um, so let's see what happens. This could get expensive and exciting or not. Well, isn't that nice? The Jeep took a piss. Um, it's actually leaking coolant. I guess this is drained as much as it's gonna drain, but let me go put this outside and come back with the catch pan. Be right back. Honestly, I'm shocked there's anything left in here because I've already drained it. But let's let's do it again. So it's really on the engine stand at this point. So I'm gonna lower it a little more. All right, I'm gonna leave the engine stand hooked up because 
or the engine hoist hooked up because if I needed to, I could pick this up. Come on, Jeep, finish peeing. All right, so at this point, this gives me an opportunity to correct uh, what's going on up here. Now, we're about to enter a point where the engine stand isn't doing nothing. This is just too difficult to do with gloves on. There we go. And I'm gonna see if I can find a better place to park my spare nut. Right, that, you know, actually having a backup nut isn't a bad idea. It acts as a jam nut. So that should pick this up and stop it from spinning. Now, as we pick this up, we wanna make sure that we are not hung up on anything like a plastic tube that isn't gonna support the engine. That would equally apply to fuel injection hardware and any other small lightweight things on the engine that will not support the engine. So we look good here, so we'll go ahead and pick it up. Now, in this case, I wanna see if it's gonna hang straight. So I'm actually gonna pick the whole damn thing up. What do I mean by the whole damn thing? Well, I'm picking the engine and the stand up to see if it will support it. And it does. You know, it's a little more weight on the back. So what I wanna try and do is get the engine centered. Uh, I don't know how that's gonna work, we'll see. So I'm gonna put some gloves on again because I like being irritated. You know, the funny thing is I bought these back in 2017 when I was gonna try and start another t-shirt company. And uh, I think I paid like $2 a box for them. I looked at them the other day and Harbor Freight was saying they were worth some crazy amount of money and they were selling them for $7 a box. And I'm like, y'all are out of your damn mind. <clears throat> So we don't want to take these off and we don't want to, we just want to loosen everything up. And then that gives us the opportunity needs to pick up. I 
All right, so that, that's looking better there. So what I'm gonna do is slide it over and tighten it down. So I don't have a third hand here, but I do have a wrench that I can hang on there. And that'll do essentially the same thing. All right. So that's not completely centered, but it's a lot closer than it was a minute ago. Um, And that's just kind of how it's, I think that's where we're going to be is we're going to be close, but we're not going to be spot on. And I think that'll be okay. And of course the machinist in me wants an adjustable uh, mount that I can slide back and forth, but this is not the engine's home. This is just where it's gonna visit. And truth be told, I really didn't need the engine stand. I mean, there's nothing pressing going on on this engine that could not have been addressed. Yeah. Need a new one of those. Okay, there's nothing going on here that couldn't have been addressed on the hoist, but it's a lot easier to do. So that was half sheared. Um, and if there's one thing that will cause you no end of grief on a Jeep, it's, it's electrical system issues and ground problems. So spotting something like that and going ahead and going the hell with it, let's rip it off there and we'll get another one on eBay. Uh, a couple of my favorite sellers are um, there's a couple, of, there's two or three companies that really specialize in, in parts off of uh, dead Jeeps. Uh, dead Jeep parts is one of them. And I can't remember the other one, but um, both of them have been just fantastic. Great customer service, reasonable prices, pretty fast shipping. So they'll be my go-to for that. Uh, and uh, let's give it another shot and see if we are close enough to being in balance that uh, it can stay put. Okay, so at this point we are purely on the stand. It does want to rotate, it, it does want to move more than I think it should at my own Okay, so I've got this nice little puddle there. I'm gonna get it away from my tools. Not really a nice way to deal with this. Let me go grab uh, some towels I don't like.
So, uh, when I was growing up, my dad was in the military and uh, had several brothers and sisters. And I'm not gonna lie, we weren't rich, we weren't dirt poor, but we weren't far from it. Um, so every dollar in the house had to earn its keep. And one of the things I was taught was never throw anything away. In particular, underwear and t-shirts got a second life as a rag. First for cleaning, then for painting. So I've kind of brought that with me as an adult and I don't throw towels away. I'm, it's real hard for me to throw any clothes away actually. Um, especially having a t-shirt company where I own several thousand t-shirts. <laughs> uh, uh, and the same thing applied, uh, except that we used them for test prints and then we threw, we used them for cleaning through them away. But anyway, these are towels that are at least uh, a minute old. <laughs> you know, they're, they're probably 10, 15 years old. And this is their last life. Now, they could easily be used to, uh, they could be washed and recovered, but... I really need to start getting rid of stuff because, you know, I just have a lot of stuff. Now, in the spirit of what I was just talking about, they are going to get a little bit more use to get some of the grease and grime off this engine. Oh, brother, do we ever have some grease and grime on here? had a uh, leaky valve cover gasket for a while apparently. So at this point, that can come off. So that's what I'm actually gonna do. I'm gonna take this off and So I don't know why they switched to this bolt. I really don't like the bolts on here uh, as compared to the pins on the smaller one. Um, this bolt doesn't carry any load. In fact, it, it, actually, it's a worse setup because the the pin was tapered. So we will be making a tapered pin for this or buying one. The idea of making one sounds romantic. At least if you love tools as much as I love them. And I don't mean that in a twisted way, you sick puppies. Um, so, I want to get... I guess we might as well find out how this rolls. You know what? That's going to be just fine. That, that'll be just fine. We're not going to run around block with this thing. So now we're going to fold this up and put it out in storage where it can rust. I uh, kid you not. That's where they live. If I had a bigger workshop, maybe seven or 8,000 square feet, I'd have room for all the stuff. I, I, I really think that I should have bought an industrial building and built an apartment in the corner of it for me to live in so that I'd have a lovely space for all my projects, ideas, and things that I actually enjoy. Because um, I really don't watch TV in the living room and uh, I don't do dinner parties and uh, you know that's not the kind of guy I am. And if you saw the flag on the wall, you know what I'm referring to. All right. You know, but I didn't get the decorating uh, skill set, and that's okay. <clears throat> I can build things and design things, and I like guns, and it's all good. Somebody else can be the decorator, uh, and I can cook too. Not that my stepmother appreciated that. My stepmother absolutely hated me in her kitchen, but that's all right. She has a fancy kitchen now, and Funny thing is, those appliances don't last any better than the cheap ones. 
and I like nice kitchen stuff. So don't don't get me wrong there, but You know, and quite frankly, if you have boys that want to learn to cook, do their future wives or partners a favor and teach them to fucking cook. I don't think there's anything worse in a relationship than someone who can't fucking pull their own weight. And that means you should be able to cook dinner. Whether it is a Red Baron pizza or, uh, you know, fettuccine Alfredo with... Scratch made Alfredo and, uh, you know, lemon basil or lemon pepper chicken from scratch. Anyway, pardon me for a minute while I roll this out where it can rest. So I was going to just roll this off outside uh, off camera, but then I realized that uh, it's not very stable. So you need to strap the legs so that they don't fall over when you bump them even in the slightest. Because I got to go over a bump to get this out and these will just fly over at the slightest, slightest encouragement. I don't even know how that's going to work. You know, actually, I don't think that's going to go outside. Not through this door, at least. This is not... Yeah, this is a lot heavier than the other one. And I don't have fucking room in it here for it either. anyway. It really needs to go out through that door. But that means moving the dolly and the trash. All right, yeah, it's good. I'll be right back. I get my keys. I got to unlock the gate for it. So you may remember I told you it was hotter than a french fry at a seagull party. And it is. It's hot out. It's 96 out. But for that jack to go out, this has to push out. And that gives me a chance to clean up anyway. So here we go. Fun, fun, fun. Only for a couple more days. Um, Tuesday, I'm having the new central air conditioner delivered, and it's coming in here via the pallet jack that's hiding underneath there. So um, it's busy, busy workshop, um, which is good. If you're gonna have a workshop, might as well get some use out of it. I hate letting all the air conditioning out of my workshop. It's probably costing me six, seven bucks right now, but it is what it is. We'll sweep while the doors open.
you know, that really needs to be fixed. That should do it. Let me go put all that stuff away and I'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, so while we wait to see if it will ever cool down again in here, we're going to pull some of this stuff off. Where did we go? Hmm. There it is. It's funny, they, they only made these out of nylon for a little while. Yeah, that works. Now, these are important bolts, so I'm going to do something that will help me be able to find them again. And that is I'm going to run a zip tie through them. And they're really, they're not bolts, they're nuts, but same general idea. And I'm gonna zip tie them to this so that I can find them in two weeks when I need them. Boy, that sure does not look that stable. But it supports it. I should have checked it while I had the engine stand in here to see how, like, you know, could it be trusted. But I guess if it falls, it falls. The worst that'll happen is I'll buy another one. I've already got a damaged block as it is. Uh, I've got several bosses on the driver's side broken off from the accident. But what we need to do now is get the rest of the coolant out of the engine. And the only way that makes any sense to me to do this is to put the radiator hoses back to use. I think you guys will find it more interesting if you can actually see what I'm doing instead of just watching my ass. <laughs> yeah, we can make a little bit more room in the garage that way. So, Oh, and that's gasoline draining out of the injector system, along with power steering fluid. It's just a whole 
fun mess. And I don't know that it's going to get much better. This bar really could have had a 90 degree mount. I can see where the ability to rotate the engine would be good. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, I don't get a warm fuzzy turning this engine on its side on this stand. So I'm going to rotate it. back up So for the moment, the stuff that I need to work on is on top anyway. So, I mean, I, I can do what I need to do. I just, like I said, I don't, I'm not super comfortable with uh, the behavior of the engine on this stand. Um, let me see what it, yeah, it was definitely, there was less weight on that wheel when the engine was on its side. And that makes sense because there's a lot of weight at the top. So I think if I, when it's, it's time to flip this engine over, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I really wanted to flip it over to do the oil pan and the main rear main seal because I think this would be really easy to do with the engine upside down. So I may have to wait until I have a friend over to help me. But in the meanwhile, that's got to be changed because it's broken here and here. This has got gouging in it and this has got gouging in it. So both of those and that that sounds like shit. So I'm going to change both of those. Um, the rest of this sounds OK. Um, I'm going to change the water pump. That's the original water pump. That's the 05 water pump. There isn't anything wrong with it, but it's uh, very, very accessible right now. I'm going to change the valve cover gasket because I suspect it's been leaking for an extended period of time, judging from all the grime on top of this engine. Um, and this is just isn't the way I keep my engines. I, I, like, I don't like vehicles that leak. Uh, I'm not used to it anymore. When I was younger, all of my vehicles leaked, and it was just the way the world worked. Um, you know, it's amazing to me that they found so many ways to cut costs by trimming material out of these engines. You know, old days, this would have been part of the engine block, but I guess it saves them a dollar worth of iron every few vehicles. Iron's cheap, really, really cheap. Um, but apparently Jeep and Chrysler, and in particular the accountants at Chrysler, are even cheaper. So uh, I think that's it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. I wonder why there's an X on here. The X indicates to me that somebody marked this block. I don't see anything wrong with this, um, with the intake manifold, that it would be marked as, well, let's look at, I don't see anything wrong with the exhaust manifold either, other than like, yeah, I really, I just don't see anything wrong with the exhaust manifold. I mean, 
uh, I could probably replace um, one of these little bolts that's clipped on here, but none of that's significant. Actually, I probably could replace all four of them. Um, and even possibly the oxygen sensors, because this is as easy as the oxygen sensors ever get um, to be replaced. Um, these exhaust manifolds look asthmatic at best. Um, but hey, it worked. And um, it's, it's worked for as long as it, it uh, you know, I mean, like there's nothing, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with them that suggests that they need to be taken apart at the moment. Um, if it was out from under emissions, I would absolutely 100% replace that. But that's not today's story. And the goal right now is to get it back on the road and running and registered and work that doesn't need to be done shouldn't be done. Um, so this is accident related and I'm gonna, I, I don't know if this is or not, I'm gonna replace it because it's gonna shred belts. And that's just, that shouldn't be making that much noise. That's a bad bearing. So I don't, I don't consider that to be bad. So it's time for me to go spend some money with a Rock Auto. Because uh, that's where I buy, that's where I like to buy my, my components. Um, and I'm going to have to think about whether I do the oil pump. Um, it would sure be a lot easier to do the oil pump with the engine out. I mean, there's just no two ways around it. it, it the oil pump would be much easier to do right now while the engine is out of the vehicle. Um, and the oil pump is something that's uh, rumored to fail. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so there's a little bonus content. I'm going to push this. I'm going to roll it up here. and Yeah, I... I definitely don't feel super stable with this, but I don't... I'm not... Yeah, it, it's not stable at all on here. So... Um, So I'm going to run it from back here because this is the actual danger area. I, I really don't think this engine stand is cut out for this engine. Um, it's sitting here at the moment, but just barely. I mean, it's just, it's super not stable. I mean, like, it was lifting the back corner. I mean, like, it's okay to work on it upright, but I may spring for a bigger engine stand and move this to another engine stand just because I'm, I'm concerned that this one's going to collapse. I really want to be able to flip this over, so I got to think about it and look up how much the other one costs. Um, I want to get all the radiator or coolant fluid out of it. And I want to be able to work on it in peace and not worry that I'm going to flip it over by myself. Um, I don't know that the parts on this are worth that much. Anyway, a little bonus content. Thanks for watching.